welcome to our online Book of Common Prayer service. It's the 19th Sunday after Trinity and today we are considering that it is anti-slavery day and I have some material that I will be using from the Clure Initiative, um, an organisation that works with the Church of England and they have produced two new hymns that are linked to anti-slavery that we'll hear today. So I do hope that you enjoy it. But let's just take a moment in the silence to gather ourselves before God in prayer. So welcome to this service in which we remember those in the shadows of our communities and across the world who are in slavery and being exploited. We join with countless others who are marking Anti-Slavery Day this week and renew our commitment to making our communities slavery free. We long for the day when vulnerable people will not be targeted, groomed and humiliated. So let us seek God's guidance in our worship today to help us learn to notice, respond and care for our sisters and brothers who are hidden in plain sight and suffering deeply. We ask for God's help to better equip each one of us in our service of him and to give us wisdom about how we can make our communities slavery free. So let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And so we have our first hymn, which is one uh, produced by the Clura Initiative, called We Are Called to Welcome Strangers.
Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. The second is this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. So let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Charles, our King and Governor, that he, knowing whose minister he is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory and that we and all his subjects, duly considering whose authority he hath, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey thee, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. Our collect for the day. O oh God, for as much as without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hand over now to Simon for our epistle, which will be followed by the hymn, It is well with my soul. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the letter to the Philippians, beginning at the first verse. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Sintish to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellent and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace be with you. This is the end of the epistle.
invite Sue to read our Gospel. The Gospel is written in the 22nd chapter of Matthew, beginning to read at the first verse. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm and another to his business. While the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I declare our faith in God by saying together the words of the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life who proceedeth from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spake by the prophets, and I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I hand over now to Kerry for our sermon, which will be followed by our intercessions with Reverend Debbie. may I speak this day in the name of the living lord who is father son and holy spirit amen parables were favored by jesus when he wanted to talk in a way where those gathered round would understand and today we have heard one of three which came in quick succession in matthew Jesus used parables to help those listening understand the kingdom of God and to understand that they could be invited into the kingdom and that once there, how they must care for and produce fruits of the kingdom. Also, how they might ensure that at the end they would be allowed to keep their place in the kingdom. Many are called, but few are chosen, we are told. When we look back to the readings heard last week, the parable of the tenants, and from today, the wedding feast, 
there are much mentions of slaves. Slaves were commonplace at the time of which these readings refer to. These slaves were sent by the landowner to collect what was due to him and by the king who wanted to invite guests to the great feast organised to celebrate the wedding of his son. And for some of the slaves from both parables they met the same fate. Some were rejected, some beaten and some killed. However, when Jesus talked of slaves, he was not talking about real situations or actual slaves. When we read or hear these parables, we know that Jesus was telling stories in a way that people would understand. So he was talking maybe about the prophets of old or the apostles and disciples who are and would be persecuted or uh, martyred in the name of Jesus. So can we draw parallels between then and now? Surely not, because slavery was abolished in 1833. But was that really the end of slavery? Sadly not. According to the Cluer Initiative, there will always be slavery. It has not been relegated to the past. And there are thousands of people in the UK who are currently living as slaves. This means their freedom has been taken and they are forced to work against their will. 50 million people are estimated to be trapped in some sort of modern slavery in the world today. There's estimated to be over 136,000 victims in the UK. Victims can be men, women and children of all ages, all ethnicities, all nationalities. And those numbers which I've given are just the tip of the iceberg. Many victims never come forward to the authorities or continue to live miserable lives with no freedom or dignity. Slavery today comes in many forms and survivors tell stories of being sold to a better life. In the case of children drawn into gangs and county lines, they often speak of feeling a sense of belonging and identity. They are often vulnerable, perhaps coming from difficult family backgrounds, poverty or areas where there are little work. They may be offered a job and a chance to get off the streets, to build a new life for themselves, to make money. But those who offer these opportunities may even organise their travel to a different country and then control every aspect of their trip. Modern slavery is very different to the slavery of past. But in some ways it's the same. Those people trapped feel like there is no way out. But now we have a chance to have an impact on the people whose life is controlled this way. Knowing that slavery still exists for the, is the first step in being able to help. Because we can't help if we have no idea of what is happening. Next is understanding and learning about the different types there are. Sexual exploitation, criminal exploitation, domestic servitude, county lines and labour exploitation. These are just some of the groups in which way people can be forced into slavery. You may have heard of county lines. It's a form of criminal exploitation where urban gangs persuade and coerce or force children and young people to store drugs and money and transport them to other towns and areas. Many of these children and young people don't feel they have a choice about their situation. Here in the UK, labour exploitation is the most common. In construction, it's in agriculture, car washes, nail bars, hospitality, 
and factories. These could be people we are working alongside and migrant workers are often victims of forced labour and labour trafficking. Young homeless people, especially men, are at particular risk of criminal exploitation. Exploiters are known to target food banks, homeless shelters and soup kitchens to recruit vulnerable people under the pretense of offering short-term cash-in-hand work. But once lured in, drugs and alcohol is often used as a way of controlling the unfortunate victim. Food banks and shelters are something we're all aware of. And in our Rockerdown Wood Church, we have a food bank and shelters nearby. And so it's important that we understand how modern slavery works so that we can be vigilant to what may be going on. I'm happy to say that in Rockerdown Wood, we have a good relationship with the local PCSOs and the local police officers, and we're supported by them with them popping in and chatting to those who stop by and and having a cup of tea with whoever's about. We know that if we have questions or concerns, they're always there on hand to give us the help and support we may need. Once we have this knowledge of what is happening, what it looks like and where it happens, we can then be in a position whereby we can report instances if we think we see it. Plenty of information is available on the Clewer Initiative website and you can find that for yourself if you wish. But what does this mean in relation to what we've heard today in our readings? Well, we have heard about those who are invited to come celebrate. We heard how many were too busy to come. How many had other more important things to worry about. We also heard that when those first invited declined the invitation, it was extended out to everyone else, both good and bad, and there was a place for them. We are the everyone else, the good and the bad. We are all invited to God's kingdom, and there's a place for us. We just need to accept it first. And if we accept well, we can't be complacent. Again, many are called, not all are chosen. Jesus told those who heard the message of the vineyard and the kingdom that it could be taken away from you and given to the others who would produce fruits of the kingdom. And of course, there was the man who attended the wedding banquet who was not dressed in the wedding robes. He was thrown out. The message was once again, when you accept the invitation, you are to be changed. You must become fruitful. What a better way to be fruitful, but to arm yourself with the knowledge needed to recognise those who are being slaved to evil. If we know what modern slavery is, we can challenge it. If we see things happening which are wrong, we can act. We can't all be policy and lawmakers, or policy and law defenders, but we have the power to act. We can report abuse or wrongdoings. We can write to the policy and lawmakers. We can call for freedom and peace. Then we can be sure that we are fruitful and be assured that there will be a place in the kingdom for us. So let us pray. Loving God, we call to you with hearts which are breaking from the pain of knowing many suffer because of oppression and many forms of slavery. May our eyes be open to all that is going on so that we can be a voice against this oppression, a voice against trafficking and slavery that we can be fruitful members of your kingdom here on earth, working in our way to help bring about an end to all the pain and suffering caused by slavery. Amen.
So let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church Militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, women and children, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Charles, our King, that under him we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto his whole council and to all that are put in authority under him that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. And loving God, we do pray for all in authority across your world. We pray for all who can make decisions which affect the lives of others. We pray especially for the situation in Israel and Palestine and Lord, we pray against Hamas and all that they are doing to destroy lives. We ask for your peace, Lord, and for your protection over all of your people. We pray too, Lord, for the people of Libya and all areas that have suffered earthquakes and landslides. For those places suffering from floods and destruction. Lord, we pray for those who will um, be able to provide aid and pray that you would um, bless them and the aid that we pray will get to the people who need it most. We, Lord, we ask you to change the hearts of those who seek to do others harm. And we pray for those with the authority to make changes that would bring about a better way of life for all people. Lord, we pray for those who are able to affect climate change and pray that governments would stick by their promises of ending the use of fuels that cause more problems in a swift and good manner. We pray, Lord, that you would give wisdom to all in authority. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen come to our time of confession. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and prepare to meet with God in spiritual communion 
and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John saith. If any man sin... We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. We come to our time of spiritual communion. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. In union, O Lord, with the faithful, at every altar of thy church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I present to thee my soul and body, with the earnest wish that may always be united to thee. And since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to thee, and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate thee from me. May I live and die in thy love. Amen. We're now going to spend a few moments in personal meditation, meditating upon the fact that God so loved you that he sent his only begotten Son into the world for you. As we listen to Do Not Be Afraid.
Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this spiritual communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. We have our hymn now, The Lord's My Shepherd, I Shall Not Want. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will. my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head with all and my cup is Will 
as we come towards the end of our service, we share our praising God with the words of the Gloria. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So I hand over now to Reverend Debbie for our notices. Welcome to our notices for this week. You'll see behind me the um, logo for the Children's Society and that is because next Saturday the 21st St Matthews in Donington Wood are doing a um, Welcome Saturday that is there to raise money for the Children's Society. So they're doing um, sausage butties, toast, jam, all those breakfasty things between 11 and 1 o'clock. So please do go down and say hi to the people down there and help us raise some money for the Children's Society who do some fantastic work with young people across this area and the rest of the world. Also on that Saturday, Holy Trinity Open Gates are having their sponsored walk from 10 o'clock. Um, if you want to sponsor us, there is a link on this week's newsletter to um, add your funds to um, everybody else's. Let's see how much we can raise um, to be able to pay for the heating of Holy Trinity Open Gates throughout the winter. And also on that Saturday, if you're still feeling energetic, there is messy church in the afternoon at four o'clock at Holy Trinity Rockwood Ironwood. A church with craft and fun and games, songs and prayers and food. So if you enjoy craft or you know people that do, then please do tell them to come along and um, we will look forward to seeing them there. We are um, looking forward to Christmas. I know, I know, but it's not that far away. And some things need a little bit more planning than others. The Christmas light switch on in Oaken Gates is happening on the 25th of November and Holy Trinity Oaken Gates are doing a tombola storm. If you've got any um, quality items that you would like to donate to that stall, then I know that Holy Trinity Oaken Gates would be more than happy to take those off you. Um, if you know the people there, then Jill Hardman, May Gregory, Liz Brain, they would all be happy to take things off of you. Um, we are having a jumble sale on the 28th of this month at um, Holy Trinity Rockwood Ironwood. So again, if the stuff's not quite good enough to go to the Tombola, then you can bring it along to Rockwood Ironwood, but not until the 27th. Um, nothing into Rockwood Ironwood until the 27th of this month, please. That's the Friday before the jumble sale on the Saturday. And then jumping back to Christmas. I know, I'm like a grasshopper. But the Christmas fair for um, St Peter's Prizely is happening in the Scout Hut on the 2nd of December. So this is really just a put the date in your diary. Um, it's at 2 o'clock, 2nd of December. Do come along and um, have some fun. Um, we might even have some people there singing Christmas songs for us. Back to this week, we have two baptisms on Sunday, both at St Matthew's, baptisms of Atlanta and Remy. So please do pray for them and for their families and do also hold in your prayers those who grieve at this time, the families of Robert Houston and Charles Morgan. So stay safe, do have a look at our newsletter and um, see how you can join in with things on there and we'll see you again soon. God bless. I do hope you've enjoyed our service today, but before we go, I'd like to pray a special prayer for those who are held in captivity, those who are considered 
our modern slaves today. And that will be followed by a blessing for everyone. So let us pray. Lord, you are a God who sets the captives free. Your spirit searches restlessly for those in despair, that they may find the life you are calling them to. We pray for those who are being trafficked and callously put to work in our region. On the cross, you were powerless and subject to the cruelty of others. Look with mercy on those who suffer this way. May we, who are blinded by the shallow distractions of daily life, feel the fear of the cornered and be roused to action. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we finish with the blessing. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And I leave you now with the second of the Clura Initiative hymns, Care for the Hidden. Do take care and God bless. Thank you.